guys, how's it? Welcome back to another Matric episode brought to you by Tenfold Live. My name is Philippa and I'm here to welcome you back to one of our fantastic episodes sponsored by Liberty. This is our last week of differential calculus, guys, so make sure you start sending in question videos on our next week's topic. We're focusing on analytical geometry and I know that's a bit of a pain in the butt for some of you guys. So send in your videos. We're so keen to help you out with all of your questions. We're li really loving hearing from you. Hit us up on our WhatsApp and our Facebook. We love hearing from you. We love seeing your videos. Also, if you feel like you need just an extra bump and you feel like matric isn't enough for you right now, go and download our app. We've got an app, it's called Tenfold Education. It's available on both Apple and Android iStores. It's fantastic, guys. It's got a great compilation of videos that we've put together, lesson videos, example videos, even some videos that show you how you can put your mats outside the classroom. We also need you to know that that app ranges from grade 10, guys. So if you feel like this metric stuff is too high a grade for you, go and download the app. We focus on grade 10 to metric. It's got all the great content that you're looking for. But for now, let's jump right into our calculus episode. We've got an introduction video and I'll be back to take the next question. So stay tuned. Calculus is a powerful and magical mathematical tool that allows us to make predictions of future outcomes and reconstruct the past. In order to be successful at differential calculus, you will need to understand the concepts of limits, differentiation by first principles, differentiation using rules, equations of tangents to graphs, cubic functions, optimization, and rates of change. In preparation for your exams, make sure to watch all of the Financial Maths Back to Basics and Demonstration of Concept videos and attempt all of the assessment questions at the end of the lesson. Once you've mastered those skills, the Enrichment and Career videos will take you beyond the classroom. Differential Calculus is 35 plus minus 3 marks in the final exam, which is about 24% of Maths Paper 1. Alrighty guys, if you've just jo joined us, this is Tenfold Live. We're focusing on differential calculus for matrix today. I hope that video was informational for you guys. Um, the one thing that I noticed in that video is that Calculus is almost a quarter of your paper one, guys. That is a lot of marks for calculus. So make sure you understand your first principles, understand your cubic functions, all of the graphs, etc. It's really important. For now, we have a question from Harold, who has actually won himself a 19-inch TV, guys. It is that easy. Send in your question video. Tell us what you're struggling with, and you could win a TV with us. So congrats, Harold. We will be in touch with you for your prize. But for now, let's check out your question, because I really am keen on helping you out. Um, hello, Tenfold. Uh, my name is Harald Gungangwe from Pumalanga. I'd like you to help me with this question on cubic function. Here is the question. Thank you in advance. See guys, it's that simple. We just need a question featuring you and your question. Send us a video. We would love to help you out and send you some fantastic prizes. So let's jump into this question. It reads, f of x is equal to 2x cubed minus 23x squared plus 80x minus 84. And the first thing we need to do is prove that x minus 2 is a factor of f. Okay, guys, this is linking directly to your factor and remainder theorem. Remember that if you try to factorize this function and you find out that the remainder after you've divided this factor into the function is zero, it means that that factor is indeed a whole factor of that function. If there's a remainder of zero, it means there's nothing left over, it divides into it perfectly. So we need to divide this function by this factor. So I'm going to use long division. So we take the original function, 3x squared plus 80x minus 84, and I'm going to long divide it by the entire factor. Okay, so remember, long division, daddy, mommy, sister, brother. Divide, multiply, subtract, and bring down. So first we divide. 2x cubed divided by x is 2x squared. Then we multiply, so we say this that we've just found, multiplied by x gives us 2x cubed. 
and 2x squared multiplied by negative 2 gives us negative 4x squared. Okay, so now we subtract 2x cubed minus 2x cubed is 0. Negative 2x squared minus negative 4x squared gives us 2x squared. Okay, so now we bring down plus 80x and we start the process again. So we divide into it, we get plus 2x multiplied out gives us 2x squared minus 4x. And I feel like I've done something wrong here. Let me check this up here. Ah, I have done something wrong. I left out this other term of the function. So let me erase this stuff here because that is a mistake. Okay, so let me fill this in properly. That is supposed to be 23 over there. Alrighty, so let's pick up where we left off. So if we say 2x squared multiplied by x is 2x cubed, and then 2x squared multiplied by negative 2 is minus 4x squared. Okay, so now we subtract. Negative 23 plus 4x squared is negative 19x squared. Okay, so now we start again. That gives us 19x multiplied out gives us negative 19x squared plus 38x. And here we would have brought this down. So now we subtract again. And we get 0 and then 80 minus 38x gives us 42x. Bring down one more time, negative 84, and we divide again. So that gives us plus 42x. Multiplied out gives us 42x. And that gives us minus 84. Double check this, minus 84. And if we subtract these two terms, we get a remainder of zero, okay? So what we've done here, guys, is we've taken the factor that we were given here, divided it into our original function, and found that if we multiply that factor by this factor, it will give us our original function with no remainder. Okay, so this isn't enough proof. Now we need to say that because the remainder is equal to zero, x minus 2 is a factor. Easy peasy. Let's move on to the next section. Okay, so now it says factorize f of x fully and hence determine the x coordinates of the intercepts or the coordinates of the x intercepts. Okay, so when we divide it into this, guys, we were basically finding the second factor of our function. That's what this thing here is. Okay, so if we take the factor, it's basically saying that if we took the factor that we divided by and multiplied it by this entire thing, so that's 2x squared minus 19x plus 42, minus 19x plus 42. Basically, that's going to give us our original function. So all we need to do now to factorize fully is factorize that second polynomial, and then we're going to get a whole bunch of linear factors, and that's what factorizing fully means. So let's factorize the second bracket. Here, Factors would be 2x minus 7 and x minus 6. Let me double check that. Minus 7x minus 6 times 12 minus 12x. That's perfect. Okay, so that's fu fully factorized. But, guys, they ask us to determine the coordinates of the x-intercept. So when you factorize a polynomial, these things are basically all the factors that if I put them into my original polynomial, if I had substitute them into the polynomial, they're going to give me zero. Basically, a factor, if you put it into its function, it's going to give a remainder of zero. Okay, so when they ask you for the coordinates of the intercepts, it means they're just looking for the coordinates of those zeros. Okay, so here we know that each intercept, because it's an x-intercept, is going to have a y value of zero. And we've basically just found the x-intercept. So this one will be 2, that one will be 7 over 2, and that one will be 6. So it's 2, 7 over 2, and 6. Easy peasy. Okay, the next question says, determine the coordinates of the turning points. Okay, guys, so if you look at your original function, you know that it's a cubic function, which means it's going to do that funny wave thing. Okay, the turning points, obviously it's going to have a turning point up there, turning point down there, and then keep on going as it's cubic. Okay, so when they say determine the coordinates of the turning points, 
What we're looking for is your ability to understand that we need to find derivatives in this aspect. Because remember, if you have a turning point, if you have a tangent to the graph at that turning point, this tangent is going to have a gradient of zero because it's going to be perfectly horizontal. Okay. And remember, finding the gradient of that tangent, you differentiate. Okay. So let's go back and look at our original function. I'm actually just going to... Okay, so it's 2x cubed minus 23x squared. And I think it was plus 80x minus 84. Let me double check that quickly. It was indeed. Okay, so that was our original function. So now we're trying to find where the derivative is equal to 0. So first we need to differentiate. So f prime of x... You apply your differentiation rules and we get 6x squared minus, that's supposed to be a square up there, minus 46x plus 80. Okay, so to find where the gradient of the tangent to the original function is 0, we make the derivative equal to 0. So we say 6x squared minus 46x plus 80 is equal to 0. I'm going to try and simplify it before I factor it. So I'm going to take out a 2 as a factor. Minus 23x plus 40 is equal to 0. Okay. So the last one was a little easier to factorize. I'm going to be real lazy and use my calculator. So remember, the quadratic formula says that x is equal to negative b, which is 23, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 23 squared, minus 4 multiplied by a multiplied by c, which is 40, all over 2a, which is 6. Okay, and that gives us 5. So that means that our first factor is x minus 5. And then the second one will more than likely be 3x minus 8 because 5 times let me just double check that I could be talking complete nonsense so what you do is you go back you remember there's the plus or minus you change that plus 2 or minus and you get ah it's 8 over 3 so I was right okay so that means that you have x is equal to 5 or x is equal to 8 over 3 and then to find the y coordinates for those turning points guys you simply Substitute these x values into your original function, hey? Because remember, you're trying to find the coordinates of the turning points of the original function. So now that you've differentiated and found all of this stuff, just substitute back into the original function and you'll be 100%. That's our first question for the day, guys. We're going to go right into an ad break, let your brains rest a little bit. Sibusisu will be back for the next question. Hopefully you're enjoying the show, guys. Stay tuned.